This is the math department at Stony Brook, one of the best math departments in the entire U.S. That's it's pretty possible. inefficient, but yeah, it's possible. You um, like right triangles. Now I know there's a better <laughs> way. Yeah. 1868, Professor C. N. Young was in his second year of teaching at Stony Brook University. This year, he was teaching graduate level courses on general relativity. And during one of his lectures, he wrote down this colossal equation, the Riemann tensor. During his lecture, he didn't think much of it, but after, he took one last glance at it, and he remembered. It was alarmingly similar, extremely similar even, to one of the equations he had worked on years before with one of his colleagues. He ran to the chair of the math department. So I went to Jim, who was department chairman of math at that time. And Professor Simon said, yeah, they basically say the same thing, which shouldn't be surprising because they both relate to string bundles. And what are string bundles? Professor Simons handed him a big, fat book. Professor Young couldn't make sense of the fat book. Not at all. It was too abrupt. Professor Young said, I can't read this. Why did you give this to me? And Professor Simon said, fine, I'll give you a few lectures on string bundles myself. Professor Simons gave a string of lectures uh, to Professor Young and uh, several of his colleagues about these string bundles. Uh, this was about 1968, 1969, and papers about string bundles had started proliferating since about 1940s. A few years after starting that hedge fund, Professor Simons used all the money he got from his entrepreneurship to fund the building of this institute right here. It's possible that Einstein's dream or Einstein's approach to geometry explaining the physics the Simon Center for Geometry and Physics. And that first moment, all the way back in 1966, was when the gap between math and physics had been bridged for the first time. What do you know about the thing? Forget it about the proof. If, you have, if I ask you to compute the area, like give me a formula, use a formula to compute the areas. I don't like I know, but sometimes you have to do it. But if you do it with a formula, then then you probably know it's true, and then you have to think about why is it. No, no, I, I'm asking you the formula for a reason. So can you do it? Uh, maybe. No, no, no. You Wait, do no. it now. Yeah, okay. it's a requirement. So let's put here. Look, yeah. So we have A, B, C, and D. Yeah. So what is so A, B, C? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> 